Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how W Design Kit helped me solve a widget problem that I've been having for quite a while now and what it can do for you. So let's jump right in. About a year ago, I showed how to use custom CSS to convert the regular elemental accordion into a horizontal accordion but it had some limitations that we couldn't add animations and unfortunately with the release of the new versions of Elementor, they switched from using divs and buttons to using the details summary html tag which does not allow you to do so much of this customization anymore so after the release of version 3.15 we could no longer use this custom css then a couple of months later i created my own horizontal accordion widget from scratch based on the Elementor developer docs. But I didn't release it to the public because I didn't want to be burdened with having to maintain the plugin. Thankfully, with the W Design Kit, I'm able to create my own widget and know that everything will be maintained in the backend by the plugin. So I've passed on the burden into the plugin, knowing fully well that it will always create the compatibility with Elementor. And the good thing is that it doesn't only work with Elementor, you can create for Gutenberg, for Elementor, and even for Bricks. So let's go ahead and see how we can install it and how we can use it in practice. So let's jump right in. So here are some examples of the widgets that I've created so far. The first one we have is the expandable flex cards, which is based off of CodePen. So here's the example in CodePen. And I created the widget and you see everything works. And everything is editable so the images the number of items the text everything is editable from the elemental page builder the other one i did was using one example from kevin powell's video so here we have the video all i just did was copy the html the css and the javascript and then i put it into the w design kit widget made some slight modifications and you're able to add as many repeater items as you want so here we have the example see it works the reason why i went for this method is because it allows you to have keyboard accessibility and you know how much i love talking about accessibility so here we have everything is keyboard focusable and everything can be styled directly from elementor so the focus outline the text the images everything can be done from elementor the next one we have is an example of a question that was asked in the Elementor Facebook group where the person was asking about how to create an accessible flip box. In this case, I just went for the fade box. And basically, you see, it's a standard flip box, but with the added advantage that it is keyboard accessible. When I use the keyboard, let me show you. I press the tab key now. I get the focus outline and I get a button that tells me what is going to happen when I click on the button, which is going to show the back. If I press either the enter or space bar, it goes to the back content. I have a button that can go back to the front cover and everything is accessible by a screen reader. The screen reader will be reading only the item that is visible at the time. So you see, all of these things was done using W Design Kit. And I'll be showing you how to create this example from scratch right now so let's jump to the back end so here we are on the back end the first thing we need to do is install w design kit from the wordpress repository so i'll go under plugins add new plugin then i'll search for w design kit there are four plugins from the company called posse myth i'm sure some of these other ones are popular to you but the one we're going to be working with is w design kit so we install it and i'll activate it so now that we have it activated let me go ahead and show you how it works so if we come under the w design kit option in your admin panel click on it here we have to now choose which of the plugins we're going to be working with since i'm working with elementor in this example so i'll just make sure i pick elementor and then if I want to work with Gutenberg as well, I can pick Gutenberg. 
it gives you options to get templates as well as widgets. So I'll go ahead and press next. Then I'll install the plus blocks for Gutenberg because I want to be working with Gutenberg as well. If you're not going to ever create any widget for Gutenberg, then you don't need to install this. You just need the Elementor or whichever one you're working with. So I'll install and activate. Now that we have everything that we need, the next thing is to finish. You might be overwhelmed by the entire interface, but there are just two main options here. We have either templates or widgets. And for each of these ones, we have the different page builders. So depending on what you're working with, you can either filter by Elementor, Gutenberg, or Bricks. In this example, we're working with widgets. So I'll go under widgets. Then let me go ahead and browse some widgets. So for the different widgets, I don't know if you've seen a video by Andrea where she talked about GSAP magnetic button. So the example she used here, you can actually get the template from the W Design Kit. So let me just go ahead and search for it. I'll go to, I think it was under the third page. You get to see magnetic button. So when I download it, it has been downloaded successfully. Now I can come to a page. Let me create a new page. Add a new one. Maybe call it W Design Kit Test. Publish it. Then I'll go ahead and edit the page with Elementor. Let me close this. Then I'll go ahead and drop in just search for the name that's called i believe it's called magnetic button so i'll say magnetic button and we get it drop the widget and we get our magnetic button it gives you all the options to add your title to style it and anything you want to do so all of these things was created using w design kit and see how fast we're able to drop it into our page and we can style it however we want to so say maybe don't click me we get the button, we can add some styles however we want. So let's say the background color, let me give it some dark color and everything just works well. So you preview on the front end, see our magnetic button works, basically magnets. And yeah, that's how you can get access to some pretty cool widgets for your specific page builder, whether it is Elementor, Gutenberg or Bricks. They will be constantly creating new ones, some of which are free, some are paid. The advantage of getting the pro license as well is that you can now download some of these widgets, look at what was done under the hood and make some changes for yourself. Or you can also create your own widgets. Without the pro version, you can only download what is available freely and use. You cannot actually edit it and you cannot create your own. So let me go ahead and show you where you can purchase the premium version of W Design Kit and then get access to create your own widgets or to modify someone else's widgets. So let's take a look. So here we have the W Design Kit website where you can go ahead and purchase a license. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It will be an affiliate link. So if you download using that link, it will be at no added cost to you and you'll be helping to support my channel and helping to create more videos. So currently they are running a deal for 50% off. You can get 50% off of the lifetime license and you get it at just $299. You can get the yearly plan as well if you want. So here we have all of the plans and let me show you the benefits of getting a license. So now let me come over to my W Design Kit website. If you go under widgets and then my widgets, you can see the widget that I just downloaded, which is the magnetic button. If you click on the three dots, you can see that there is no option to edit it. So we can't edit it. And the option to create a new widget is disabled at the moment because we're not signed in. But once you've purchased the license, you'll be able to log in. Then I'm just going to log in now. So once we're logged in, if I come back to the widgets, then I click on my widgets. Now we can click on the widget itself and now we get the option to edit in a new tab. So I'll edit it. 
and you can go ahead and see how the entire widget was created. You can see the CSS, the HTML, the JavaScript. You can see this plus sign. It means that there were some external scripts added. So if you click on it, you see that they added the GSAP library as well. So all of these things, you can go ahead and edit an existing widget and see how the widget was created, then modify it to become your own personalized widget, or you can create a widget from scratch, which is what we'll be doing right now. So let me go back. Some other benefits is that once you've signed in, you can see some of your widgets you've created on a different website. So this widget, I created it separately and I saved it to the cloud because you can see, you can download the zip file. And if it's a widget that you created yourself, you can upload it to the cloud, which I did here. That's why you can see this option that says remote. This one says local. This was created on another website. And then I can just simply go ahead and download it. And now I have this widget downloaded from the cloud and I can use it on this website. Then if I've made some changes, I can go ahead now and click on the three dots and push it back to the cloud. So that will now update the one that's currently in the cloud and make the different version number and other things like that. But we're not going to work on this now. We'll first create a new widget from scratch. Once you've added your license, you'll now be able to create a new widget. So I'll click on create widget. You give it a name. So I'll just say maybe something like, let's go ahead and see what the name of that code pen version was. Expanding flex cards. Let me go ahead and copy that. Come back to the widget. Let me close all of these. So that'll be the name. Expanding flex card. Expanding flex card. Then we'll go ahead and give it an icon. You can choose from either the font awesome five library or the e icons library. If you are creating for Elementor, if you're creating for Gutenberg, it has a different icon library. If you're creating for bricks, it uses the bricks icon library. So depending on which one you're creating for. So let me go ahead and choose one from Elementor. And I'm just going to search for the accordion. So that's the E icons accordion to so come back. I'll paste that in here. You can go ahead and drop in a featured image, which is what you see when you're trying to edit the widget. But for now, I'll leave it blank. Let me now go ahead and create the widget. So it takes us to this portion where we have the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'll come to the HTML. Then I'll simply come to the flex cards and copy the entire HTML here. Then I'll come back to the edit and paste it. Next is the CSS. So I'll come back. Right now you see the example is showing SCSS. What we need is the CSS, not the SCSS. So I'll click on option, then say view compiled CSS. So now we have the compiled CSS. I'll go ahead and copy everything. We'll make some changes later. So control C, then come to the CSS and then paste it. So we have our CSS, come back and then copy the JavaScript. This is using jQuery. So I'll copy it, come back, paste it in there. Now that we've imported everything, we'll go ahead and start making some changes and adding some controls so that it becomes a usable widget that the user can edit. So let's go and take a look. The first thing you notice here is that, let me first go ahead and expand it. We have some repeating items. As you can see, we have a div with the class equal to option, option, option. So we have a repeating item. So rather than having to add it statically as repeating items, we'll create a repeater control so that the user can create those repeating items by themselves on the backend. You know, we have like your accordion, you have your item one, item two, item three, item four, then the user adds the content within those items. So what we need now is just to have one of these items, put a repeater control, and then add the options to that repeater control. So let me go ahead and delete all of the other options. 
leave the last div because that's the closing div for the wrapper. I'll also delete this A tag. So we have our basic repeater item. Let me save it. Let me now go ahead and collapse this. Now we have the HTML. Let's go ahead and actually add the controls. So the first control we'll be using is the repeater control. I would like to add it into a section so that I can organize everything. You know, in your elemental layout, you have the layout style and the advanced tab. Then underneath, usually you have some different sections, something like items, then maybe additional settings and things like that. So that's what we'll be doing here as well. I'll create a new section. That section, I'll name it something like items. So within that section, I'll go ahead and drop in the repeater field. So for this repeater field, maybe I'll just call it item. You can give it a name so that you can remember. I'll just leave the default name here, but usually I like to name things so that I remember them. So this is the item, or let me just rename it. So say ACC repeater, then just give it some random number XYZ. Okay, so we have this. So once you create the item, you will now see a new option popping up here. So select repeater. Let me expand it. So when you drop down the content, you see you can either get the loop itself or the index or the ID. For now, we're trying to create a new loop. So I will click on the loop, but let me make sure it is within the div. So within the wrapper div, let me click on loop. It will create a new loop. So this is supposed to be the loop item here. So I will replace all of these div, that is the wrapper loop div, into the new one that we've created. So we have a class name of options. The active class name, we'll add it using the JavaScript. So we don't need to add that now. So I'll just click option. I won't delete any of the things that was created here. These are the things that we'll be using to identify the loop. So I won't delete anything there, we'll just add the new options. So here we have the class name of option. Then we need to add the style. For this one, you can see that it is a static image, but we want the user to be able to control the image. So I won't actually copy the entire image URL. I'll just copy the actual style. So I'll say style up to the start of the URL. This is going to be added by the user control. So copy this. Then I'll add it somewhere here. I'll just close the bracket and close the quotation marks. Later, we'll add the control into the URL. So now we're done with the first thing. The next thing we need to do is we have a couple of things that we'll be adding as controls. First, we'll be changing the background image. Then we'll be changing the icon. Next, we'll change the heading. And finally, the description. So those are four controls we need to create. So let me just go ahead and create those four controls now. So let me collapse this so that everything is easy. So within the repeater item, I'll go ahead and add a new control. The first one will be for the icon. So search for icon. I'll drop that in. Then the next one is for the heading. Or oh, that will be a basic text. So let me just add in a text. Then the next thing will be other description that will be there, which will be a text area field. So text area. So we have three of them. The last thing we we'll want is the background image. So I'll look for image, which is called media. So I'll just add the media in there. So we have our four items. These are the four key items. We can go ahead and start styling them. But for now, let me just go ahead and just rename them. So say this one is the ACC icon XYZ. This will be the ACC heading XYZ. The text area will be the description ACC.
and then the media so this will be the background image so acc bg image x y z we can do some other styling but that will be done later first we already have our controls we can now start using these controls within the html so let me expand this so now we've done the first two divs we we'll go to the next div this div is not going to be changing so I'll just copy it the way it is so ctrl c coming to where we can add in our code i'll paste that next one is the label that one as well we don't need to change anything there as well as the icon it's only the content of the icon that will be changing so i might as well just copy everything then i can delete what i don't need so ctrl c ctrl v we have everything delete the top portion so for the icon we'll be adding our own icon so i'll delete the default one is there then i'll drop in my icon which is called icon here so just click on it then the next thing we're going to be changing is the text so i'll just delete the text then i'll give it heading the other one is the description so delete the description i'll leave the html tags there the only thing i'm deleting is the inner content so this is the description then i'll come back to my background image the url now i jumped okay we'll copy the media i guess it just has some issues let me just copy it and paste the url there so we should have everything what next i think that's all so i can go ahead and save this so the html is done the CSS, I don't think we need to change much here. We might change it later. Let me delete this import. We don't need to import anything. We might make some changes later, but for now, I'll leave it the way it is. So let me go ahead and save it. The final thing we need is the JavaScript. Because it's using jQuery, we actually have to write jQuery rather than just writing this dollar sign. So I'll go ahead and write jQuery jQuery j query then i'll go ahead and save it the next thing we might need to do is add some default content so that it doesn't look blank when we try to edit it in elementor so now i'll go back let me collapse this and start adding some default content so the first thing is the icons control for that one maybe i'll leave it the way it is then for the text let me give you some default value so maybe i'll say heading Maybe the label block should be block so that the text then the heading so let me even change the name from text to title the default value is heading it's block okay and then you can make it dynamic as well if you want or leave it as static text area i'll do the same thing so maybe change the name to description or content give it a placeholder maybe the default value should be this is just a placeholder description okay maybe i'll make it five rows so it's big enough label should be block as well okay i think that's it for the media I'll call it background image, not just media. Background image. Then label block, okay. I really just only want image. So image. I think that's it for now. Next, let me go back to the repeater itself. Let me see, I want a default count of three. Okay, I think that's how Elemental likes to do it. It likes to give a default count of three. Because one will be too big so the three should be perfect so i think that's it the repeater title maybe i'll just call it item and then save let's do some final checks for the html css and javascript 
So I go to the HTML. I think everything looks okay. Then check the CSS. User circle. I think these ones are not needed. So let me delete all of these user buttons. Because if I go back and check the example, I think that button is for this, so it's not needed. Let me go ahead and delete them. All we need is the ones that have options. And then we need to add body. So let me go ahead and delete all of this body. And I think I've gotten rid of everything. So let me go ahead and save it. Then the JavaScript. I think everything is in order. So now let's go ahead and add it to the page. So I'll come back to my pages. Come back to the design kit test. Edit with Elementor. Then I'll drop in the widget. I believe I called it expanding flex card. So expanding. So we have our items here. Let me now go to each of them. Add in an icon. Let me just add this icon. Then I'll add the image. This image. Then I'll add the heading. Maybe test two, three, four. Do that for the second item. An icon, just one random one. Then the background image, maybe this. The third one, add an icon, then a background image, be this. Let me add another item. So let me just duplicate this item. We have four. Give it this background image. Then check the heading to Joshua. Okay, so I think I have everything. Let me give it a different icon. Then publish. You can use SVG as well if you want. Let me now preview it on the front end. You see we have everything working. So that's how simple it is. How easy you can create anything you want just by copying the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We can even go further. So let me refresh again. As you can see, at the moment, everything is closed. But what if we want to have that one open at a time? So we can go ahead and make some modifications to the JavaScript to make it open one at a time. And we can choose which of them will be opened at any given point in time. So I'll come back to the W Design Kit backend. That's one other good thing about this is that you can just edit in this widget area. Once you make the edits, it will automatically update everything that's on your page. You don't have to be afraid of having to go ahead and delete the old one and create a new widget item on the page. Once you've made the changes within the local environment and you save it, it will be updated on everywhere you've used the widget. So now that we have this jQuery, what we can now come ahead and do is create another control that will be used to tell us which of the items will be active at any given time. So I'll come back to the controls. I'll create a new section. Maybe this one should be called additional settings. Then I'll go ahead and add in another control, which would be a number. That number is what the user will use to select which accordion item will be open at the initial state. So let me drop in the number. That number, I'll call it maybe initial open. Then maybe I'll just call it ACC initial underscore open. Something like that. The default value, I'll say maybe three. The label, maybe I'll leave it as inline for now. We'll see how it looks like on the front end. The minimum value should be one. Maximum value can be 100, okay. I think that's it. 
So what we're going to be using is a combination of a data attribute and JavaScript. So the data attribute, I will add it in the HTML. So into the options, I'll just add a data attribute or maybe like data open equal to, then I'll use this control. So within two quotation marks, I'll drop in this control. So this data attribute will be referencing it in our JavaScript to determine which one will have a class name of active because if you see from the example, basically the active one just has to have a class name of active for it to work. So we just need to use the control number to determine which one will be active on the initial state. So I'll come back to edit it. Then I'll come to the JavaScript and now I'll start with saying, I'll define a couple of variables. The first one will be for the options. So I'll say let options equal to say scope dot query selector. The class name I'm trying to select is options. So open and close the normal braces and say dot options. Then put the semicolon. The next thing we want to select is let. So within these options now, I want to get the attribute of the data open. So I'll say let initial open equal to, then it will be these options dot get attribute. The attribute I'm trying to get is the data open. Let me expand this so we have fully. So once we get in this option, what I want to do is to check if the value exists, then convert it to a number. If it doesn't exist, then just make it blank. So I'll use the question mark and say, if this value exists, I just want to convert this to a number. So copy this, then I'll just say number and then paste it. Otherwise, put the column, just return blank. Okay, so that's the next thing. Then finally, I'll go ahead and add another variable, which will be all of the options within the option. So I'll say let, maybe something like opt equal to, or define the scope again. Within that scope, I want to get the query selector all. So this time I'm getting all of them because for the other one, it's just going to be only be one option per time. But this time I want to get all of the option within the options and then go through all of them, check for the index and say, based on the data open index, I'll go through the loop item. So for loop number one, number two, number three, if the data open is three, then to loop through all of them until it gets to the third loop item. And then it asks that class name of active, which we can see from here. We just need to add a class name of active. So let me come back. So I'll select all of the class name of option. Let me put that in quotation marks. Basically, I'm trying to select all of my different option. So once I've selected all of them, I now go through them in a loop. So I'll say opt dot for each, then put and close. Say opt comma end. So I'm getting two placeholders opt and end. So basically as option and index, then I'll just use an arrow function and open and close the curly brace. Then I'll say, if the initial open exists and the initial open index plus one exists, then it should open another curly brace. Check for the opt dot class list then add the class name of active. So active, then let me close it. And I think that should be it. Let me just go ahead and put another 
semicolon here. I think that should be it. So let me save it and see if it actually works. So the HTML, it has this data attribute of data open and then the number that we set. So let's see if it actually works. The initial value should be three. So let me come back and refresh the page. And the initial value is three. So that's why it's working. So yeah, that's it. I think I made some styling issues here, which I'll go ahead and fix later. But yeah, that's basically how we have it working now. So I can come back and edit it again. This time, under additional settings, so then with the initial open should be two. So it gets two. If I say four, it gets to four. And that's it. So this is how we can get the initial active value using the JavaScript. If you have something like dynamic shortcodes, that's another beauty of it. You can actually use dynamic shortcodes within this W design kit and you can do some complex things if you want. And that's how I actually got this one working. So this one works using the dynamic shortcodes plugin in combination with the W design kit. Same thing that happened with this as well. I had a combination of W design kit and the dynamic shortcodes plugin all working together. But in most cases, you don't need it. But I was just trying to test it out and I found out that the both of them are actually compatible with each other. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a thumbs up so that I know that you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, write them in the comment section. I will try our best to answer those comments. Please, if you want to purchase the plugin, use the affiliate link in the description, which will be helpful to me to help me to continue to run this channel. And you also get the benefits. If you get it right now, there's an early bird discount, which you can get. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.